Let's see how to create a music manager like this one. You can get all of the code in the description below along with my 2D water system, moving platform system, acid pack, and a bunch of other stuff. For this system, we're going to have two scripts, a music library script, which contains an array of all the music soundtracks that we have in our game. So for the main menu, action music, and stuff like that. And then we're going to have a music manager class, which is going to be a singleton that can be accessed from anywhere. And it's going to have a method that plays a track from the music library. In my scene, I have an audio manager game object for my previous sound effect tutorial. It's got a sound manager and sound library script attached. This is not necessary to follow along with this tutorial. And I've got a sound effect 2D source. I'm going to create a empty game object called music source, and I'm going to attach an audio source component to it. I'm going to disable play on awake, and I'm going to turn on looping because we want our music tracks to loop. Next, we're going to create the music library script. And then we're going to create a struct for our individual music tracks. It's going to have a public string for the track name and a public audio clip for the clip. And we have to make it system.serializable so that we can see it in the inspector. And then we're going to create a public array of music tracks called tracks. And this is how it's going to look like in the inspector once everything is populated with our music tracks. Next, we're going to remove the start and update function because we don't need them. And we're going to add this block of code. It's a method called get clip from name. It takes in a string for the track name that we're trying to get and it returns the audio clip of the track that has that name. Inside of the method we simply cycle through all of the tracks in our tracks array. If we find a track that has the track name that we're looking for we return the clip of that track. Otherwise we simply return null and that's all we need. Back in the editor we can assign the music library to our audio manager and feel free to populate this with as many music tracks as you like. Another thing to note is that every single music track has to have the load type set to streaming. You can also play around with compression settings if you like, then hit apply to save the changes. Next up, we're going to create the music manager. Since we want to make this a singleton and that we can access from anywhere in our game, we're going to add a public static music manager instance. Then in the awake method, we want to check if the instance is already set. If it is, that means we have a unnecessary duplicate and we can just destroy this game object. Otherwise, we want to set this to be the instance and we want to make sure that it does not get destroyed when we change scenes. Then we remove the start and update functions. And then we're going to create a reference to the music library and also to the music source that we created earlier. Finally, we're going to add this most important massive block of code. It's a core routine called Animate Music Crossfade. It's going to take in a audio clip of the track that we want to play and it's going to have the fade duration. And by default, I have this set to 0.5, which is half a second. Inside, we're going to create a temporary float percent variable, which is going to be set to zero. And we're going to use this to help us learn. This value is going to go from zero to one. And as long as it's less than one, we want to gradually increment this variable over time. So if the fade duration is 3 seconds, we want this variable to go from 0 to 1 in 3 seconds. Then we use that variable to simply lerp the volume of the current track that's playing from 1 to 0, which means that we're fading it out. And then we do a yield return null because we're inside of the coroutine. Once the track is faded out completely, we want to replace the track with the new track that we want to play. And then we want to play that track. Note that the volume is still at zero, so we cannot hear this track yet. So we're going to reset the percentage variable to zero again, and we're going to do the exact same lerping thing. But this time we're going to do it from zero to one, which means that we're fading the volume in. We've completed the coroutine part and and now we have to create a public void play music method that we're going to use to actually play this coroutine from outside. It's going to take the exact same parameters and it simply calls the coroutine that we just made. It accesses the music library through the reference that we created. It gets the clip from name, track name, and then it also passes the fade duration. And then we pass all of that into the start coroutine method. Now back in the editor, we assign the music manager to our audio manager. We assign the music library reference and the music source. Here's an example of how you can use this. 
In my main menu, when I press the play button, I access the music manager, the instance, and then I call the play music method and I tell it which song to play. In this case, main menu. And that's it. If you want to learn how to create this parallax effect, this main menu, these scene transitions, or anything else, I've got a bunch of tutorials on my channel, so go check them out.